Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I wanted to work a few practice problems from our empirical and molecular formulas practice sheet, just in case you need a little extra help. Make sure you have your periodic table, make sure you have a calculator. Do not just watch me do the problems. Do the problems beforehand. Press pause, work the problem. Let me help you with the trouble areas. Studying and reviewing is not watching me work problems. You must work them yourself as well. Okay, go get your things and let's get started. Okay, if you're in my class, this is number three. I noticed it was not on my answer key, so I wanted to make sure and make that available to you. A compound contains 12.7 grams of iron and 7.29 grams of oxygen. Its molar mass is 87.89 grams. What is its empirical formula and what is its molecular formula? So let's remember the steps. Remember, I like these steps because they make a little rhyme, and I think that rhyme helps us to remember them. Step one, we are going to take our percents and change them to mass, percent to mass. Step two, mass to mole. Step three, divide by small. And step four, multiply till whole. Now I want us to notice in this problem that we're starting with grams. We're not starting with percents. So we are not going to need to do this first step, percent to mass, because we are already at mass. And remember that first step really isn't a step anyway. So we're gonna start with our givens, 12.7 grams of iron and 7.29 grams of oxygen. So we need to do mass to mole. So I'm gonna set my problems up to do my mole conversion. Bring my unit down, put a mole on top. Bring my unit down put a mole on top. Because my unit is grams, grams is molar mass, mass of one mole. So we need to look at our periodic table to get our molar mass of iron. I'm seeing that that is 55.845, and then oxygen, 15.999. When we do this conversion, we need as many decimals as possible, like at least four or five. I'm gonna do, let me see, I guess that's five. I'm not very consistent, but I always have between four and six. Okay, mass to mole, we've done this step. Now we need to divide by small, and we can see 0.2 is going to be smaller than 0.4. So we're gonna divide both of our answers by the small. When we do this, we are creating a one, because we need a ratio. Okay, let me put this in my calculator, and I'm getting 2.0. One and two are both whole numbers, so we don't need this fourth step. Our final answer for empirical formula only is Fe1O2. Now it's saying that its molar mass is 87.89 grams. We're gonna need that to figure out the molecular formula. Let me change colors so it stands out just a little bit more since we're going to answer the second question. To find the molecular formula, we need to first find the molar mass of the empirical formula. So if we have one iron, that was 55.845, and we have two oxygens, when we multiply two times 15.999, we get 31.99, just a second y'all, eight. So if we add these two together, our molar mass is 87.843. We need to divide that by the original molar mass to get our multiplier. But I hope you're already noticing that 87.843 here, this number here, and 87.89, that's the same number just about. If we divide those, we're gonna get a one. That means that the empirical formula and the molecular formula are one and the same. I wanted to make sure that we saw a problem where that happens, where the empirical formula and the molecular formula are just the same formula. Okay, so that was number three. I'm going to number four next. Okay, so number four. A compound contains 65.6% carbon, 9.4% hydrogen, and 25.0% oxygen. Its molar mass is 1,922.85 grams. What is its empirical formula? What is its molecular formula? Now this problem's gonna get a little bit long because we've got three compounds and we're finding molecular and empirical. But let's just sketch out those steps really shorthand-wise. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply till whole. This problem does start with percents, but remember, changing percents to mass really isn't a step. We're just going to rewrite those numbers as grams. So 65.6 grams of carbon, 9.4 grams of hydrogen, and 25.0 grams of oxygen. Now we've gotta go mass to mole. So we need to set up our mole conversions. I'm gonna set all three up at one time. 
bringing my unit down. That's the molar mass, the mass of one mole. Molar mass, we need to get that from the periodic table. Carbon, 12.011. Hydrogen, 1.008. And oxygen, 15.999. Remember, this is the step where we need lots of decimals. Okay, so I've converted all of my grams to moles using quite a few decimals. You can see I'm a little bit inconsistent. I normally look at my calculator and start writing digits until it just feels like an easy place to stop where I'm not having to do some like tricky rounding. That's why that second number has a little bit less decimals because I started thinking, oh, that's getting a little tricky right here, so I'm just gonna stop. We need to divide by small. Our small is oxygen, so we need to divide all of these by oxygen's moles. Okay, I'm gonna put this first one in. Ooh, and in my calculator, I'm getting 3.495. I can't leave that as three, and I cannot round that to four. I'm gonna put this as 3.5. Let's do the next one. This one does round to the nearest whole number, 6.01. We can leave that. Okay, so we just divided by small. We are ready to multiply till whole. And since we have a decimal number here in 3.5, we will need this step. I need to come up with a number that I can multiply 3.5 by to get a whole number. 0.5, that's like 50 cents. I can multiply by two. If I have two 50 cents, I've got a dollar. So if I multiply this by two, this is going to give me seven, a whole number. Just like in math though, what you do to one, you gotta do to all. So I've gotta multiply all of these by two. And so my empirical formula would be C7, H12O2, empirical formula. Now we need to find the molecular formula. Remember to find the molecular formula, we need this molar mass. But before we use that molar mass, we need to find the molar mass of our empirical formula. So let's do that first. We've got seven carbons. Carbon is 12.011. Hydrogen, we have 12 hydrogens, 1.008. Oxygen, we have two oxygens, 15.999. I'm gonna put all this in the calculator and get a total. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm getting 128.171. That is the molar mass of our empirical formula. So remember, to get our molecular formula, we need a multiplier. And we find that multiplier by using the original molar mass of the molecular formula. Let me change colors right quick to help. That was the 1922. 0.85, original molar mass of the molecular formula. Divide that by the molar mass of the empirical formula, and it's going to give us a multiplier. Because our empirical formula, this is just the basic ratios of the elements. To get the final molecular formula, we need this multiplier. 1922.85 divided by 128.171 equals, whoo, 15 is our multiplier. Are y'all ready for this big molecular formula? Seven times 15. Carbon, we have 105 carbons. Hydrogen, 12 times 15, 180. Two, oh, I don't need to do that. Two times 15 is 30. Oxygen, 30. Here we go, molecular formula. Okay, let's do this one. I'm pretty sure it's number seven. A compound contains 42.044 grams of carbon and 7.956 grams of hydrogen. Its molar mass is 114.26 grams. What is its empirical formula? What is its molecular formula? Okay, so this one is starting with grams. So we're just gonna write grams down. We've got 42.044 grams of carbon, and we've got 7.956 grams of hydrogen. I'm gonna set up my problem because we need to do mass to mole. Bringing down my unit, one mole on top, because remember, one mole is equal to the molar mass. So we need to get the molar mass off the periodic table. 12.011, 1.008. Okay, so let's convert these to moles, but this is the step we need lots of decimals. We went mass to mole, now we need to divide by small. But remember, here, we can't really round. You can round to the nearest whole number if it's like 0 0.0, 0 0.1, or you can round up to the nearest whole number, 0.8, 0 0.9. I'm getting 2.25. You cannot round that. We are now going to have to use step four, multiply till whole, 0.25. I like to think about this as a quarter, 25 cents. How many quarters does it take to make a dollar? Four. Four is a good multiplier here. Whatever you do to one, you gotta do to both. So one times four is four, and 2.25 times four is nine. 
So our empirical formula is C4H9, empirical formula. But we also have to find the molecular formula. So we're going to need this molar mass. But before we use that molar mass, we need to calculate the molar mass of our empirical formula. So carbon, we have four of them, 12.011. Hydrogen, we have nine of them, 1.008. Remember, those are masses from the periodic table. Okay, so 48.044. I put, shouldn't have put that in the calculator, but I did, so I won't do this one. And I'm getting 57.116. So to find our multiplier, remember, because the empirical formula only gives us the base ratio of our molecular formula. We need to raise that up to where it needs to be. So we're going to take our original molar mass of the molecular formula, divide it by the molar mass of our empirical formula, and that will give us a whole number multiplier. I'm getting 2.00002. So to get our molecular formula, C would be 4 times 2. We're going to have C8 and then H18. I'm not sure if we really need this last problem, but I went ahead and did it anyway. This is number 10. A compound contains 27.631 grams of carbon, 4.880 grams of hydrogen, 6.446 grams of nitrogen, and 11.043 grams of oxygen. Its molar mass is 434.66 grams. What's its empirical formula? What's its molecular formula? This problem starts with grams, so we don't have to think about percents. We just need to write down our grams. So we've got 27. 0.631 grams of carbon, 4.880 grams of hydrogen, 6.446 grams of nitrogen, and 11.043 grams of oxygen. So we need to do mass to mole. So I'm going to set these problems up to convert to moles. I'm going to make my crosses, bring my units down. That's the molar mass, the mass of a mole. That's to complete my conversion factor. One mole equals the molar mass. And since these grams represents the molar mass, we need that off the periodic table. If we look at the periodic table, carbon is 12.011, hydrogen is 1.008, nitrogen is 14.007, and oxygen is 15.999. I'm going to put these in the calculator to convert to mole using a lot of decimals. You pause here, do the same, let's come back and compare. Okay, this is what I've got. I know I'm not very consistent with how many decimal places that I use. Okay, so now we need to divide by small. So if we're looking at these numbers, the nitrogen number here is the smallest. So I'm going to divide each one of these by the small, but remember, you cannot round. Okay, let's do this. Meet me back in a second. Oh, for that first one, it was really easy. It was like 4.99 something, so it was really easy to decide five. The second one, though, I'm putting in, and I'm getting 10.5. So I wanted to make sure and um, restart the video and make sure that you do not put 11, that you put 10.5. Okay, let's do this last one real quick. Oh, I'm getting another 0 0.5, 1.4999, 1.5. Okay, so we dealt with a 0.5 earlier. We said that was like 50 cents and it takes two 50 cents to make a dollar. So when we multiply till whole, because that's what we need to do here, we're going to multiply by two. And what we do to one, we've got to do to all. 5 times 2 is 10, 10 and a half times 2 is 21, 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 and a half times 2 is 3. So our empirical formula is C10H21N2O3. Now we need to figure out molecular formula. Remember, to do the molecular formula, we're going to use this original molar mass. That's the molar mass of the molecular formula, but we need to compare that to the molar mass of the empirical formula. Carbon, there's 10 of them. That's 12.011. I'm just going to go ahead and do that math. Hydrogen, 21. Can't do that. I'm going to wait. Nitrogen, we've got 2. 14.007. I can do that in my head. Oxygen, we have 3. I should do this one in my head because I've done it so much, but I can't, so I'm going to put it in the calculator. I'm getting 47.997. Do hydrogen's number, 21.168. Okay, let me add all of these together. And I'm getting 217.289. I sure hope y'all can see that. So we need to divide those. I'm going to come over here. Sorry, it's getting so messy. 434.66. Remember, that's this number here. Divided by 217.289. I'm going to assume that's 2. But I like to go ahead and put it in. If you don't get something close to a whole number, you know you've done it wrong. 
that is a 2. So our molecular formula is going to be C20H42N4O6. Okay, I hope me working a few problems out helped you to understand a little bit more clearly. Remember, you still have to practice. You can't just watch me. But until next time, bye, y'all.